Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, April 7th, 2022, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Republican presidential primary in 2024 and how Governor Ron DeSantis from the state of Florida could actually be facing a bigger threat to President Trump than he might think at this point in time. Now, the 2024 presidential election is a long way away, but it seems to be very clear that there are two major frontrunners on the Democratic side and the Republican side. You have President Joe Biden, who many people are still expecting to run to uh, run for a second term. Donald Trump saying that uh, you know he also is exploring a potential bid, him being the Republican frontrunner as well. What you're finding is that we might end up in a position that there is a matchup that is very similar, in fact, could be exact where it was back in 2020, with the only change potentially being Donald Trump's vice presidential candidate. When you take a look at the Democratic side, there is a lot of discussion about whether or not Biden will run, but nobody who would run would actually face a significant threat to Joe Biden when it comes down to winning the Democratic primary. That's just simply how it works. The incumbency factor is a major thing, and Donald Trump in the Republican primary will also benefit from it. But the problem is, that in benefiting from it, you have to be the main incumbent. You have to be the incumbent president of the United States. Back in 2020, when you take a look at the Republican primary, what you found was that many, many states actually canceled their presidential primaries in an effort to solidify support under President Trump. They didn't hold a single contest in some of these states and said all of our delegates will be going to President Trump because they needed a unified party. And that's exactly what we could expect for Joe Biden. But I don't think we can expect that again for Donald Trump in 2024. Unlike in 2020, when he was the actual incumbent. Yes, Donald Trump is going to go into 2024 with a significant amount of support, and he already has. When you take a look at public approval and public data for the Republican side when it comes down to Donald Trump being a potential nominee for 2024, what you find is that while he does fluctuate back and forth in terms of overall support, he's generally hovering about 50% in terms of everyone's total support. For a candidate. Now, I will say that this is actually a decrease from where we expected him to be. When you take a look at the polls immediately following the election, he was hovering around 60s, 70%. Then it did take a dip, and then it went back up after the insurrection uh, had sort of leveled out in terms of overall uh, the amount of Americans that really cared about the situation entirely. But what I wanted to point out was that Donald Trump was in a position and has maintained this level and lead over many other Republican contenders. But there is one in specific. Governor Ron DeSantis, that has risen to popularity despite being in, you know, seventh, eighth place early 2021, started to rise and rise and rise dramatically in terms of overall support to a point where now, even though he isn't polling above Donald Trump, he's still getting a significant chunk of the vote, even with Donald Trump on the ballot. The problem in this circumstance for President Trump is that he used to poll consistently at high 50s, high 60s. You have some polls now intertwined that show him sometimes in the high 50s, but you also have him at 41%, 47%, 44%, 36% and in one. And there is one major thing that was available now, or at least that is an opportunity now for Republicans that didn't seem to be much of an opportunity and wasn't viewed of as much of an opportunity before, and that was Governor Ron DeSantis as the 2024 GOP nominee. When you take a look at the polls that had Trump up at 75%, Ron DeSantis wasn't even asked on that poll. When you see a bunch of other ones, 57%, DeSantis was out. Looking at a number of these polls, 60%, DeSantis was out, 57%, DeSantis was out, 59%, DeSantis was out, 68, 62. Ron DeSantis wasn't included in this list. And even when he was, he was only polling at maybe 7, 8% at most, up until recently, up until the mid 2021s, where you now find that Ron DeSantis is polling very, very high in comparison to other top names across the nation. Ron DeSantis in the most recent poll is at 13%, but here's the thing. He's a governor from the state of Florida who skated into his election, you know, didn't actually win by a significant amount, won by less than half a percentage point. And what you find is that Ron DeSantis outperforms Senator Ted Cruz, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, you know, uh, Nikki Haley, the UN ambassador, former governor of South Carolina, Senator Josh Hawley, Governor Larry Hogan, Vice President Mike Pence, Senator Mitt Romney, Senator Marco Rubio, Senator Tim Scott. Ron DeSantis defeats all of them. And while Donald Trump maintains a lead, that lead looks like it's in a position where it could start to follow down. 
and that 13% isn't necessarily an accurate indicator of where Ron DeSantis is in terms of the overall average. Four out of the five most recent polls have him in a position where he's at least, you know, doing better than many other Republicans. But if you take a look at the most recent three, 13% puts him at second place, 19% puts him at second place, and 20% also puts him at second place. In fact, most of the time, Ron DeSantis comes up in second place. But you get 19%, 20%, 15%, or even 13% of the Republican primary vote when you are up against the former president of the United States tells us there is something here worth exploring for Ron DeSantis and that it is a possibility that Ron DeSantis could become that next nominee. And that's where it gets very interesting. Now, when you take Donald Trump out of the scenario, Ron DeSantis becomes the immediate frontrunner. Almost every single poll in recent uh, months have shown that Ron DeSantis defeats every other Republican in a one-on-one race or a uh, multi-candidate race when Donald Trump is out of the picture. Even though Ron DeSantis started out again, like I said, in 7th, 8th place, when you take a look at the numbers that were polled before the 2020 election or immediately after, what you find is that Ron DeSantis at some points was at 2%, 3%, 4%, 3%. It wasn't looking good until about mid-2021, when his popularity skyrocketed, and his name recognition skyrocketed as well. And now he polls about a consistent one-fourth section of the vote. As a governor from Florida, when you have Senator Ted Cruz, Nikki Haley, Josh Hawley, Larry Hogan, Mike Pence, Mike Pompeo, Mitt Romney, Mark Rubio, Tim Scott, Donald Trump Jr., You have names that are wickedly recognizable across the nation that have been mentioned many, many times in mainstream media. You have the runner-up from the 2016 Republican presidential primaries who isn't even topping 10% when it comes down to this poll against Ron DeSantis. Almost every single poll shows DeSantis ahead, and if not, it's Mike Pence. And chances are, Mike Pence isn't going to run. Ron DeSantis is the next most Trump-like candidate. It is not Mike Pence. Ron DeSantis is a Florida version of Donald Trump, except he keeps his composure and he's slightly more politically correct. And that's enough to keep him in that presidential status while saying exactly everything that Donald Trump believes and stands for. And that's why Ron DeSantis is so effective and why Democrats should be worried, and partially why Donald Trump should also be be worried. You see, I see this as a circumstance where Ron DeSantis is getting one out of every 10 voters in the Republican primary to say, you know, I know that Donald Trump might be running in this exact circumstance, but I am still going to back you in the election. I also think when you take a look at statewide polling data, the numbers don't exactly get better for President Trump. The national overview might say that Donald Trump is in the lead, but momentum can be built up easily in many of these primaries. And Donald Trump is still going to be facing off against, potentially in the scenario, someone who can campaign nearly as well, someone who can uh, drive up crowds nearly as well, someone who is recognizable. And I think Donald Trump also sees this as well. Before we get into the statewide data, I want to point out that Donald Trump has recognized that Ron DeSantis is a top name for 2024, saying that if he runs in 2024, Ron DeSantis would be a good vice presidential pick. This is not Donald Trump trying to at all throw out, you know, some type of peace offering to Ron DeSantis. This is Donald Trump's way of telling Ron DeSantis, you will not beat me in 2024, so I'm going to give you this instead so you don't even try. I also think, on the other hand, what we can see this as is that Donald Trump might be scared. He might be offering this position because it could be what Ron DeSantis might view as the second best option. Sure, Ron DeSantis could run in 2024 against Donald Trump, but there's no guarantee that he would win. And the data right now doesn't tell us that he would win. It would be a stretch to see him win, but momentum could be built up. There is the possibility that he could win, whereas any other Republican has no chance. Getting vice president might be that next pick. But if Ron DeSantis runs against Donald Trump, he runs the risk of being ostracized by the GOP, completely removed the same way that he saw for Brian Kemp and Doug Ducey, longtime Republicans, lifelong Republicans that campaigned with Donald Trump, that received his endorsement, that made him angry once, and now are public enemy number one from their statewide GOPs, from the nationwide GOP, and from the Trump wing of this nation. And Ron DeSantis might not necessarily want that. Because if he loses to Trump in 2024 in a primary, he might not necessarily be able to run for president in the future. And I honestly think that Ron DeSantis sees the presidency of the United States as his endgame. I think the vice presidential thing, uh, the vice presidential nomination from Donald Trump could be a stepping stone. 
I think that truly could provide him the opportunity to run in the future, especially if they win. The same way that Mike Pence in many ways was seemingly geared up right until the end. Mike Pence being a staunch Trump supporter after being chosen, because not necessarily right before, right? I mean, he endorsed Ted Cruz in the primary, barely. But what happened was, when Donald Trump chose Mike Pence, he became a top name for 2024. And now, because he decided to certify the election results, one mistake, a thousand favors for Trump, that one mistake pushed Mike Pence over the finish line to say, you know, hey, you are now no longer, not the, the finish line, the, the very careful line that has been drawn. Donald Trump pushes him over and says, you know what? You are no longer on my side. And I think you were weak. I think you might have been a good vice president, but you will not get my support in 2024. And I think that's what Ron DeSantis ultimately is afraid of. So honestly, he might turn this down as well. But I do want to say, that Ron DeSantis right now, when it comes down to nationwide numbers, is in an alarmingly good position compared to President Trump. The primaries are two years away, a year and a half away, right? Which means that there is still a lot of time for Ron DeSantis to build his name recognition, to visit Iowa, to visit New Hampshire, to visit Nevada, to visit South Carolina. Ron DeSantis is in a pretty strong position for someone who was a no-name two years ago. That's why it gets nerve-wracking for President Trump, because you have someone who really should have never posed a threat to you, that you are now trying to actively appease, but that might not necessarily work out. Now let's move over to statewide election data, Republican primary data that we can find. North Carolina shows that President Trump only has a 19-point lead over Ron DeSantis. Isn't that something? Isn't it fascinating that President Trump can only defeat Ron DeSantis by 19 points, in a state where President Trump should be demolishing him. This is, again, a, a reason why I'm going to reiterate that Ron DeSantis is in a surprisingly good position. Donald Trump has no way upwards when it comes down to name recognition. Everybody knows him. And on the Republican side, everybody loves him. But they might like Ron DeSantis more. Ron DeSantis is not a household name for the GOP, whereas Donald Trump very much is. Ron DeSantis could get there over the next year, and probably will, to be completely honest. The media attention is likely to focus on him, and there's just a lot going on when it comes down to uh, President Trump and Ron DeSantis and potential opponents and candidates for 2024. But one thing is evident. If Ron DeSantis is keeping Donald Trump below 50% in terms of overall support, there is still hope for Ron DeSantis. And it's not just hope, it's a shining beacon saying run. It's a beacon saying that you have a possibility of winning here. Things can change overnight, but I'm very doubtful that they will. I think Ron DeSantis will see a subtle, but sure, climb in support across the nation, across states, as we head into 2024, where he will have to make a decision. Do I run against President Trump or do I not? I think there are electoral advantages of him becoming the Republican nominee, but in terms of his overall political career, he might be screwing himself over by running or potentially defeating President Trump and then becoming the next president of the United States and solidifies his endgame and that's it. He becomes the president and he gets exactly what he wanted. Moving beyond North Carolina, we also see this in Texas. Donald Trump is being kept under 50% by none other than Ron DeSantis. Even in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, you know, position, not one-on-one, -on -one, but a multi-candidate race between Ron DeSantis, Greg Abbott, Ted Cruz, Nikki Haley, guess who comes ahead? Ron DeSantis wins by 29 points. When you take a look at President Trump and Ron DeSantis getting about one-fifth of the Texas vote when Donald Trump is only getting about you know, one in two voters, it's alarming, again, because President Trump should be obliterating any and every Republican contender against him. And again, it should become worrisome, in a sense, for President Trump. Moving beyond these, let's see if we can find some other polls from statewide races that aren't necessarily national numbers. I'm not sure if we'll find that many. Uh, let's see here in Florida. I mean, you're seeing a seven-point race between Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis. Isn't that something, right? Florida, which handed President Trump the victory by 30 points over Senator Marco Rubio, who was elected in 2010, went on to win in 2016 by seven points more than President Trump seven points more in the general election, yet came up short and couldn't even get a third of the vote in the Republican primary. Whereas Ron DeSantis is only losing by seven. Only losing by seven. Another poll showing that Ron DeSantis defeats President Trump by three points. Defeats President Trump by three percentage points. I mean, there is just a lot of data out here that is telling us Ron DeSantis is going to be a formidable opponent to President Trump should he run. 
And I think there is, again, an electoral advantage when it comes down to Florida. Seeing Donald Trump won here by 3.3, what you would find is that Florida, solid red throughout the entirety of the presidential election. We know how it's going to go. I don't think it'll be decided by 15 points or more, no. But I do think that Florida, we will know exactly how it's going to go and that it will go to Ron DeSantis. And I think that's also where the electability question comes in, where if you have a solid 30 electoral votes that you know won't be wavering, won't be going back and forth, he becomes the more electable and more desirable candidate for the GOP. So I'm really excited to see what happens in this Republican primary. Truly speaking, I think if anyone was to defeat President Trump, it could be Ron DeSantis. And Donald Trump seems to be at least somewhat worried or at least acknowledging that Ron DeSantis is this second place type candidate who could become first place. There is a lot to discuss here in the future. I think we need to wait until a little bit more data comes out. But for right now, if I was Governor Ron DeSantis, I would be thinking long and hard about whether or not I run in 2024, regardless if President Trump runs or not. Because the data right now, two years out, doesn't seem like it's uh, at all trying to indicate that I should not run. In fact, it looks very, very promising. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.